Art History Online presents The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Van Gogh painted The Starry Night in June 1889, about a year prior to his death. In 1941, it's been acquired by the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. The oil and canvas painting measures 73.7 by 92.1 centimeters. The painting depicts a nocturnal scene a small village in a mountainous landscape, underneath a crescent moon and star-filled sky. In the foreground we can see a cypress tree, and in the center of the village there is a church spire. We're going to disassemble the composition to understand how our attention is steered over the canvas. In the foot of the mountains and in the houses, a horizontal line is suggested. In the tree, a strong vertical is visible. These two lines direct our view to the sky and mountains, though we can't ignore the diagonal lines originating from the mountains and the tree. Notably, the sky takes up about two-thirds of the canvas. It seems as if dimensioned lines frame and emphasize the sky. This solid composition sets the stage for a dynamic interplay of lines. The most striking is the line starting at the left of the canvas, swirling towards the center, where it intertwines with other spiraling lines. Around the moon, a curving line arises from the colorful brush strokes, as we can say for other sinuous lines. We can state Van Gogh created a structured composition in which there's room for an exciting, seemingly chaotic play of lines. The composition appears to be a well thought out ratio of balance and tension. Now we're going to take a look at the ordinance, the disposition of planes and figures. In the foreground we can distinguish the top of a tree. It covers the entire length of the canvas by an inch. On the left of the tree we can see some vegetation and on the right houses and some trees. All these elements in the foreground are cut off below they aren't fully fitted within the frame. The next plane displays the village. Behind the village we can see a forest. And mountains. The highest mountain top is naturally the darkest and farthest away. The crescent moon is bright and clearly visible, therefore it seems rather close to earth. The moon is accompanied by stars, in different sizes and at variable distances. Between the stars, an unknown stream swirls through the sky. Behind it, some more stars are visible. As if lit by the moon and stars, a band of white separates the mountains from the sky. In the starry night, the illusion of space is created by intermitting the elements in the foreground and the overlapping of picture planes. In addition, we can see a vanishing point, somewhat left of the church. The woods move towards that point and they're getting smaller as they're closer. Though there is some overlap in the sky, the sense of spaciousness is mostly created by the juxtaposing of smaller and bigger elements and the suggested movement. Our point of view is from above, as if we're looking over the village from a higher position, though as the viewer I do get the sense the sky is above and beyond us. In my opinion, the use of light emphasizes the point of view. There are several sources of light, the biggest is the moon, then there are the stars, and there's light coming from some of the houses. These might be negligible, but they are present. The moon and stars might light up the sky, they don't seem to illuminate the village or surrounding mountains, just maybe the forest on the right side of the painting is lit a little. The foreground is a lot darker than the sky. As a spectator, from a quiet dark spot, we observe the stirring sky, the scintillating stars and bright moon above the dormant town. Van Gogh applied the oil paint with thick, broad strokes. If we look very closely, we can see the texture of the paint. We can also see he didn't apply a base, the canvas is still visible. We can see thick outlines and simplified forms, heavy contours roughly filled with short brush strokes. These strokes seem vibrant, electric. It gives the impression of constant movement. Van Gogh himself compared his brush strokes with ancient woodcuts. 
The colors used in the Starry Night are predominantly blue and yellow. As contrasting colors, they intensify one another. We can also distinguish white, orange, brown and green. There are a great variety of shades of all the different colors. If we look at some details again, we can see Van Gogh blended some of the colors directly on the canvas. Or actually, he optically did. By applying strokes in different colors next to and over one another. The exaggerated, expressive color and brushwork are typical for Van Gogh's later conception of art and post-depressionism. The expression of emotions through bold colors and expressive imagery. The goal was not to accurately imitate reality with natural colors and lighting, but to create form. To paint their subjective view of the world according to their own artistic perceptions. The vibrant strokes and bold colors are emotionally intense, as appears to be the painter's goal. Van Gogh stated, Instead of trying to reproduce exactly what I have before my eyes, I use color more arbitrarily, in order to express myself more forcibly. Scholars have tried to explain the content of the painting through literature, astronomy and religion. After the self-mutilation of his left ear, Van Gogh admitted himself to the asylum Saint-Paul-de-Mosol in Saint-Rémy. You can learn more about this act of self-mutilation in the video Why did Van Gogh cut off his ear? He painted the starry night whilst being in Saint-Rémy, allegedly based on the view from his window. But most agree that the starry night is based on Van Gogh's direct observations as well as his imagination, memories and emotions. It is said that the church resembles those common in his native Holland, not in France. Besides, it is questioned whether a cypress tree was even visible from his window. The cypress tree is seen as well as a visual as a symbolic link between land and sky, life and death. Cypress trees are typical for cemeteries in southern France and are associated with mourning. Van Gogh once wrote, Why, I say to myself, should the spots of light in the firmament be less accessible to us than the black spots on the map of France? Just as we take the train to Tarascon or Rouen, we take death to go to a star. The Starry Night wasn't Van Gogh's first painting with stars as a motive. He painted Café Terrace at Night and Starry Night over the Rhone. Though whether the cypress and the stars would represent a personal association with life and death is up for debate. After painting the Starry Night, Van Gogh wrote to his brother Theo, the cypresses are always occupying my thoughts. I should like to make something of them like the canvases of the sunflowers, because it astonishes me that they have not yet been done as I see them. In the same letter he mentioned, two studies of cypresses of the difficult shade of bottle green. These statements suggest that Van Gogh was interested in painting the formal qualities of these trees, not just for their symbolic connotation. Surprisingly, based on letters, it appears that Van Gogh and his brother Theo weren't particularly excited about the starry night. Van Gogh actually wrote very little about the painting. He described the painting as a night study, probably the starry night, and scholars think he grouped it with the rest, which said nothing to him, as Van Gogh wrote. He referred to the starry night as being too abstract, as a failure. And yet, once again, I allowed myself to be led astray into reaching for stars that are too big, another failure, and I have had my fill of that. Theo also referred to these pictorial elements in a letter to Vincent. I clearly sense what preoccupies you in the new canvases, like the village in the moonlight, or the mountains. But I feel that the search for style takes away the real sentiment of things. Without a doubt, the Starry Night is an internationally appreciated extrasensory experience. It's the materialization of Van Gogh's observation of the world, of the visions in his turbulent mind. The Starry Night is seen as the embodiment of Van Gogh's unique style and expression. Thank you for watching this video by Art History Online. Did you like this video? Feel free to like, share or comment.